This is Rockfight Rugby, and I've got Clinton Scott here, the owner, administrator of the Lions Pride of Josie Facebook group, a good friend of our channel, and we're a good friend of theirs. And Clinton and I are going to have a chat about the Lions season, you know, the so close yet so far season. Hello, Clinton. Hi, good evening, MV. Yeah, always a pleasure chatting to you. I always look forward to these chats. And yeah, season that has come and gone, but yeah, we'll discuss that. I want to ask you, I want to ask, ask you a very unfair question. How gutted were you <laughs> last Saturday evening when the Ospreys got that five point, you know, bonus point win against against Cardiff? I mean, we were all holding thumbs at the edge of our seat. It was so, so close, and in a way, that's sort of indicative of the whole Lions season. But how did you feel? I mean, I, I know it's a tough question to ask, but I, I'm I'm keen to hear. Yeah, it was a bit of a. I think the whole season was a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. Um, like you say. One week we here, the next week we there. But anyway, going it fast track it going into this game against the Storm, it was like the last throw of the dice fires. So going into this place where I was going to watch the game, I had everything set up there, and my mood was high. And I thought, you know what? If they pitch today, they can take these guys. Um, but the operative word is if they pitch. And yeah, lo and behold, they started like a house on fire. I mean. 21 12, I think we were at half time. So the hopes were high and everything. Mm -hmm. And then the the same old, same old just kicked in again. So I was very hopeful until that those last few minutes and that, and then it just started like, you know, disappearing for us. And all these calculations that had to be made. If we got these points, we'd get in. If Ospreys didn't win with a bonus point, all these kind of things, you know. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, gutted, absolutely gutted. Um I was I was gutted because I was so positive that we were going to do it at the last hurdle, and then the whole season basically just repeated itself in those me, last few minutes. Let me tell you this: I actually felt you. I felt the pain because you. I was so. I've so. I've been so invested in the Lions. You know, the season, following them and getting to know them and getting to know the players and the struggles and like oh, I've always made no no uh, secret of it that I'm a bull supporter first, but now the Lions become my second team, and I felt your pain. I must be honest. <laughs> But I want to I want to go just quickly talk about that game before we talk about the rest of the season. I think, you know, um, the pressure told at the end. A guy like Marius Lowe, and you and I talked about this on the on your Facebook page. Marius Lowe losing his temper like that. The guy who set the example, led, led by example, captain courageous almost. For him to lose his temper like that, uh, to me, was more than more a sign of 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 pressure telling than anything else. Do you agree with me? No, absolutely. I mean, I think you've also, you and I have discussed this on a previous on previous occasions as well, what an asset he is to the Lions team. And his game has just come alive since coming to Joburg. And his captain, captaincy throughout the season has been has been remarkable. I mean, he's held this team together. But a moment of madness um, where we couldn't afford to have a slip up in this game. That could have been the telling point there in that game as well. I mean, yes, it was hectic how Angelo Davids, uh, you know, went into Sanele and wrote him off there. But then as a captain and a mature player, he should have just kept his calm and calmed everybody and said, guys, you know, we're still in the fight. Let's just go. And he did exactly the opposite. And when he was sent off, I mean, yeah, we were reeling. We were reeling at that stage because we'd already lost uh, Rubs early in the game. Uh, then it was Sanele. And then he comes you know, on and does that, and we lose him with the yellow card, so they really had their backs against the wall. But having said that, my hope was still there mm. in that moment, but it was just fading. Yeah, that's it's true what you said there, now. the Rob's injury in the beginning, Sanele being lights out as well, or even Cash said after the match, he was still dear Makar, the words that mm -hmm. Cash specifically used. So the whole backline had to be shuffled, and one of the strengths of the Lions this entire season have been the ability to to counter-attack and do unexpected things. You know, I, I think of that try that uh, Kwan Horn, uh, Kian Horn, sorry, sc uh, scored against, uh, was it uh, the Warriors? Where um, yes, Morris, yes, I think, yes, kicked yes. it and he just ran yeah. completely unexpectedly. All those options yeah. went out of the window with this sudden reorganization. Yeah. And also, you had a 14-man team to play against. You had a one-up advantage, which you're now given away 10 minutes off, which equalized exactly. the playing field against a team like the Stormers. You don't want to do that. To me, yeah. uh, that to, to me was where the game was won and lost, that specific incident. No, no, absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, we had those two guys going off with injury. And like you say, 
they got a red card, so you got to capitalize on those type of things. Uh, we were a man to their advantage, where against Glasgow and against Connacht, we were the team with one less, and we still won. It was the it was the flip side this time. We played against a team with one less, and and they had the better of us. So, no, no, absolutely, it was a total moment of madness there by Marius. Um, as much as I rate him as a player and a captain, that was defining in this game, and it just basically blew out the last candle of the season. Did I want to read you something? I read it to you before the conversation, but I also want to read it now before as part of our, our discussion, which I think is, is, is it goes to the heart of the matter. And it's by Brendan Nell, our colleague there at Supersport. And uh, I just uh, two or three paragraphs towards the end of a, quite a long and involved article, but he's, he wrote the following. He said, it's hard to escape the thought that often it's one step forward, two steps back for the Lions at the moment. Do they have the resources of coaching staff to make that change? That is a debate worth having. Because as Einstein said, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is a definition of madness. And the Lions have the basic firepower, but if they are to compete with the bigger side, they need to be consistent and showcase the beliefs in themselves and they may need to make some tough decisions or the cycle will just be con will just continue. Now, you and I agree there's, that there's a lot of truth in that statement, however harsh it might be. Just give me your thoughts yes. on that. No, no, absolutely. Um, like you're saying, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Yeah, look, I mean, if you look at the coaching call, let's start there. I mean, Cash has obviously been at the helm now in these last three seasons in the ERC. Lots of chat about him and should he be there, shouldn't he be there? But I think with the uh, assistant coaches that have joined him now, um, there has definitely been an improvement. I mean, if you take the stats of the Lions over this last season compared to the previous two, there's been a lot of positives. I mean, they, they're much more competitive at breakdowns. Their, their line-outs and their scrums are generally a force. Um, they would have, you know, here and there, they might miss a line-out in there, but generally their scrums are strong. Jacques Ferry has had a massive hand in the way they defend now. Uh, I mean, the Lions' defense was like a revolving door. You know, a few seasons ago, anybody and everybody would just get through but you, you won't just easily get through them. It's little moments, little moments of lapsing concentration that they concede. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the attack has been good from different angles. They mm. can run from any angle on the field, but it's pinning these things down and it's, it's, it's crossing T's and dotting I's now. Um, can we succeed with the current coaching team? I believe we can. I reckon they have got momentum and they've, They've bonded, it, but it's, it's, once again, it's these little soft moments in these games. You have a brilliant game the one day, the next week you fall apart. The next week it's brilliant, and if the Lions can put three, four solid performances together in a row, they would have come a long way. Um, so, yeah, tough decisions. Look, um, some people will say, should they look at the captaincy? I think Marius has proved himself as a captain, so I think it's good to continue going with him. But there might be some combinations and stuff that they're going to have to look at. And the players are also going to have to put up their hands in these games because, I mean, the coaching team can do that much. But when you're in a tight situation on the field, you've got to keep your calm, i.e. Marius. Um, and players have got to just be, there must be a more mature maturity about them. They've got to start uh, eking out these close games and winning them, you know. And then, Obviously, you in a lot of our games that we lost by close margins, it was also kicking, um, you know, that cost us. So I put on the page the other day as well that Mona Stein mm -hmm. is going to have to work with all our kickers like nonstop in off season. They've got to get their eye in there um, because we can't go through another season where it's like chasing shadows at the end of a season where we could have won games earlier had it been for kicks or whatever. But it's going to take 80 minutes of full concentration, week in and week out, um, to, to, to succeed. You've, you've, you've uh, unearthed a lot of nuggets there that I'm going to just, uh, you know, pick at at the moment. <laughs> First thing, yes. we said Marius. Marius wasn't the only guy who got a red card. At Connacht, they had 14 men. At Glasgow Warriors, they had, four, they had 14 men. Discipline yeah. was a problem throughout the entire yeah. season. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing. Second thing is, the coaches cannot be held responsible for what happens on the field. The coaches teach them to play to the best of the ability and they've shown how good they can play when they do that. 
Yeah. When the next yeah. week fall apart, it's not the coach's fault. Nothing's changed in terms of the coaches. I know from speaking yeah. to Andre Petorius, and he's got a bit of contact with the Lions and like they did they, they tear the head, head out of the heads because of that inconsistency. Because they yeah. they train it to 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 the nth degree, you know, practice it. And then when it comes to to shoves on, on game day, the opposite happens. That's the next thing. So now in terms of 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 the little things that we're making the tough decisions, you know, this week. We've seen posts on social media of a whole pile of players that the Lions have taken uh, leave off now, and they they waved them a fond farewell. But they've waved them a farewell nevertheless. The only person that's notably absent was Jordan Hendricks, which we'll talk about just now, about from yeah. that farewell list. But uh, yeah. they seem to have cleared house quite substantially. Quite a few names on there that I was quite surprised about. Um, what's that yeah. guy? The just the the Smith brother. Um, JP uh, Ruan it? Smith Ruan yeah sorry Ruan yes I get confused between the two of them sorry man I'm, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah I'm surprised to, 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 to see they've let him go for example but I mean that's part of the clearing is this talk about talk to me about those players that have left do you think they've made the right calls there or is it a bit of an overreaction uh, throwing the baby out of the bar footer um, if you if you look at those I think there were 10 on that list we'll talk about Jordan now then he's the 11th but there's 10 on that list so Okay, obviously, Willem Alberts came to the end mm. of his career, so he's one of them. Bobos, Andres Kusia, it's another one. Um, I think he's, there's people that say he could have still done well at, at Curry Cup and that, but I think he's maybe just lost a bit of pace and, you know, the skills that he had under Ackerman at, at this level. So he's probably also come to the end of his career. Um, Cordner Ferri, always a hard worker and that, um, but they've brought in, obviously, a loose head prop now, John Skuman. To have replaced him. Um, other players, yeah, Sergio, we were all hoping that the mm. Lions would actually pin pin him down, but they didn't. I believe he could be going abroad. So he's that, going that's abroad. a big he, But that's quite early in the season that was announced already, yeah. Because he was yeah, alone yeah. from the Ricos, yeah. Correct. So um so that that was a pity to lose him, even though we knew he was just on loan, it would have been great mm. to have had him on, on a permanent yeah. basis. Um, just yeah, Tyler Box, a promising young center. Played in the Curry Cup and that he's he's leaving in that, so we didn't really get to see much of him. Really know how much you know if it's mm. a big loss or not. Um, obviously, Manuel Satuka is a big one, yeah, uh, because he's going to the Sharks. I'm just trying to think who else is on that list. Um, oh, Ruan Smith, that's the one I want to talk about. Yeah, 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 Ruan mm. Smith. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's 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 been playing well, and I mean, him and his brother are, are probably just as good as each other, and I mean, JP Smith is. Still, yeah, for another season. So, I don't know if they if they just felt that they want to bring somebody in with different skill sets or whatever, and that's why they're bringing John Skuman in and they've got rid of him. But yeah, uh, look, they obviously, mm. like we mentioned in a previous conversation, they've they've signed quite a few new players that they that they're yeah. bringing in exciting players. Um, but yeah, a person wonders whether they just. Said this is it. This is the end of the road for you guys, and we need to take it another step up next season. And maybe you're not going to form part of our plans. So yeah, you don't really know what the thinking is behind all of them not being re uh, renewed. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to just hope that the guy that they've signed now is going to do it for us. Um, one of the other things. Some that, exciting players. Sorry, one of the other things that Brendan was mentioning there is the quality of the the, the recruiting the Lions have done. The Bulls and the Stormers have done some substantially. Substantial uh, acquisitions, some impressive acquisitions, and he, he used the term "yeah." The Lions went and bought some Griquas and Rusty Cup players. It's a bit harsh. I mean, yeah, but uh, Ruben Bolle, Dumbella, yeah. it, Dumbella, Seven Springbok. Yeah. I, I'm excited yeah. about him. Um, yeah. uh, Johan Skuman, Pierre Skuman's brother that you told me about. Yes. I didn't even know that. Yes. That gives you an yeah. idea of how good a player he could be potentially. Yeah. Do you agree with that statement that that those players are a bit, uh, you know, below par? Maybe the new acquisitions. Uh, you know, if we look at the guys that they're bringing in, so yeah, Dubella, very exciting. Like you say, he's, he was a sevens player. I've watched a couple of uh, clips on him. He's explosive at number ten. I mean, him and Sanele could be a potent halfback combination. I think Dubella will fit the Lions style of play like a glove, you know, hand in glove. Um. John Skuman, obviously experienced prop. He plays for Bath. And if he's anything like his brother, then it's a good signing. Um, Franco Marais, a good hooker that played, you know, for Gloucester and played in Japan. But then to answer your question, do I think like 
Greek quiz and varsity, to be honest, I don't think the Lions have the luxury or the spending power that these other unions have. So it's almost like take what you, you know, what you can get. Uh, we would love some marquee names in there like a Franco Mostert or Malcolm Marks or Quaha Smith returning to the den. But yeah, the, the money obviously cannot match those guys what they're getting overseas. And for the Bulls, fortunately, and the Sharks and the Stormers can afford like better quality, if you like. Um, so we've seen it in the past where even under the Ackermann era, they took no-name brands and turned them into world beaters. Let's hope they can do the same with this with this group of players that they've recruited now. It's no big names. It's people that have got relative experience, you know, in their positions. And But it's going to boil down to, like you say, it's going to be up to the players on the field to ensure that they that they practice that they play what they've practiced in the week. Like you say, the coaches are pulling their hair out because of the inconsistency. And we also pulling our hair out because of the inconsistency. Even speaking to one of the players now in the week, and he says, Yeah, on set eindelijk on self with the blameer, want ons weet precies what ons moet doen op die veld, and dan geweer het nie altijd nie. Um, if they were not good enough, we wouldn't see the likes of them thrashing Glasgow. We wouldn't see them doing what they did to Connor. But we've seen that. We've seen enough of them to know that if they can put down an 18 minute week in and week out, they can do it. They can qualify for these knockouts. Yeah, that's exactly the point. And this the worries me a little bit if all those players have let go. You know what? If you talk about any company, there's institutional memory. Things that the company in this in the shape of the people in that company have learned. And these guys have gone through deep waters together. They've learned the lessons this year. Mm-hmm. And I was all positive and stuff when somebody um challenged me on Facebook on your on your on your on your page about the prospects. And I said, I'm quite excited about the prospects. They've got a good experienced team. They've got some new exciting players coming. I think they're very well set. I'm just a little bit worried about some of those new players maybe not gelling immediately like you would hope they would. And then, um, you know, losing that kind of experience, the bad times that they've gone through that have gelled, would have gelled the team. By losing those players, they might, have, they might lose out on that. But I mean, that's true for any rugby team. You can't, you know, generalize that much. I'm actually, to yeah. be honest with you, quite quite positive. I think they're going to do well. I, I, I could see them. It's only three months away. Uh, the next season starts in September. Can exactly. you believe it? So, yeah. Before I, we I'm look, positive. they'll be, yeah, exactly. No, I totally agree with you. Look, I mean, getting in like a horde of new players into any team, whether it's soccer or rugby, or, it's going to take a while for them to find their feet. And, you know, the structures of how it's going to be done in that. But if they are good enough, they'll click quickly and, and you know it will gel quickly so I, I just the lines as a whole the, the coaches obviously they've done their work but everybody as a collective is going to have to look at what worked and what didn't work and yeah they're just going to have to focus on 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 their discipline because you that is like you say besides missing kicks in some of the games their discipline has cost them in games and you, you can't be doing that at this level um, and I think we are all frustrated of it's almost, almost, almost. We need to break through now into a, into a playoff place. I'm but ask, it's, at the same token, it's, it looks uh, I'm positive. I'm going to ask a little bit of a controversial question. Now we've talked about the coaches, but you know the specter yeah. of Johan Ackerman making a mess- messianic <laughs> return <laughs> to Alice Park has a big word for you for a rugby guy. <laughs> but I mean, it's like the second coming. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, exactly. And what are the what are the odds of that? And what do you think that even let's say let's for some arguments like say it happens, will it really solve all their problems? Do you think? Um, I don't know, hey, because a lot of times you you don't always know what all the problems are in a union, and if it's something mm. from higher up, you know, if Ackerman comes in, is he going to be given free reign to do what he has to do? Um, obviously within boundaries. Is he going to be give that, given that or is he still going to be told this and that and will there be a friction? So I believe if, he, if he's given his, if he's been left alone to do what he has to do, I'm sure it can work. But um, like you mentioned the other day as well, he, he had relative success with the Lions and we all know, like we've said it so many times, if if Kocha never got red mm-hmm. carded, he probably would have ended his three-year tenure you know, successful with a trophy. Um, it didn't happen in that. But then when he left the lines, he went abroad to Glasgow. He didn't really have that much success. And then again in Japan, okay, he's taking his team now to a higher division, but mm. will he really be the savior we're all hoping for? I don't know. Would it be a better option just to continue with what they've got now and just 
move forward with this momentum. Um, you know, I would think so. so That's my. I, I think they must give it at least another year. I think, like you said, you've got Ricardo Lopes and Jock Furry and all those people around him. That's, and Julie Redlinger is big, nice team, experienced. Now, Warren Peterson made a huge difference. Big. Do not go and up, upset the apple cart in terms of the coaching team. I think we'll just send the wrong message. Just stick to your guns. Give it another year. Mm. Apply the lessons that you've learned this year, which were hard, hard yeah. learned. Lessons by lessons were learned the hard way. I mean, you've, you've, you've earned the right to, to apply those lessons. Give the guys a chance yeah. to apply it. No, so, definitely. Let's just talk about Jordan okay. Hendricks. That was a bit of, yes. of a surprise. Uh, the Lions being a bit uh, about his contract, it looks like, no? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, we all heard along the way, this one and that one's leaving, and we all heard Jordan's name and Manuel's name as, like, the front runners that were leaving. And then when they released this photo on their page and saying, thank you, he was not there. And then I read about it on another article, and then obviously it's now been mentioning quite a few articles that he's got a contract that only expires at the end of December and the powers that be are holding him to that. So, um, yeah. So some people say, let him just go because his head's probably now with the Sharks already. Other people are saying no, but he actually, when he was moved to 12 in the last few games, he, he was brilliant mm. in that position. Um, so yeah, it's not the first time that the Lions have, held players to their contract to the last day, whether they want to be there or not be there anymore. But they obviously have the power to do so. Um, and yeah, so he it looks like he'll start the new season as a Lions player and they'll probably get about three months out of him. They might even use him in the Curry Cup or maybe in the Challenge Cup in December and then release him. I don't know how happy he is about that, but uh, yeah, because I saw on social media that he was... Uh, posting things of his new Sharks jersey and how excited he is to be oh, at Kings no. Park. And now they've just thrown a spanner in the works. <laughs> so, yeah, let's... You can't yeah, build so... a team around a guy that, you know, let's have arguments let's... like they start playing him at 12 now. And he does so well and the team starts firing all cylinders and then he leaves in the middle of the season. I mean, you can't do that. That doesn't really make sense. It's a bit... I don't want to use the word, but it seems a bit petty to me, if you ask me. Mm. No, no, absolutely. I mean, we know he's leaving. They know he's leaving. They're signing all these players. And if it was a position that we really were battling in, I'd say, okay, I can mm. understand that they want to just try and use him there to get us on the front foot in the new season. But it's not. I mean, we signed Dubella. We've got Kate Volater there. There's Zana mm. Duplessis. Sanelli is brilliant at 10 as well as 9. So it's not like we, without being horrible, it's not like we really need him. So... It's maybe just trying to show some power there that I will keep you there until the last day of mm. your contract. Um, but it, do, yeah. it doesn't make sense. It's chess, man. It's like you're not making the Lions stronger, you're making the Sharks weaker. That's probably part of it. Yes. No, no, exactly. Exactly. I agree with you there. <laughs> but you know, as a whole, I believe that they were nearly there. They were nearly there. Um, we can say it over and over again. There were some close losses that they should have won. Even against the Stormers, they should have won. It's got to move from we should have to we have won. Mm. And, you know, let, let Lions Rugby be what Lions Rugby was a few years ago again. I just want to finish off by saying, repeating what you said earlier, I don't know if people picked up on it, but you posted this week to say, listen, 2015, you, are, you also missed out, the Lions also missed out on the playoffs. But in 2016, it all came together. Just talk us about through that briefly so we can know that history repeats itself. Yeah, absolutely. That That was like so on the forefront of my thoughts this week is that in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 2013, we were kicked out of Super Rugby. Our one came in and we played against these real no-name brand teams, but they were building confidence in that. 2014 came, I remember we won seven games. It was the most games we'd won in Super Rugby in a very long time. So we won those seven games. So it started looking promising, but it wasn't enough to qualify for a knockout, but we could see progress. 2015 came and it was even better. They upped it. So instead of seven games, they won. They won nine here. And I remember we drew against the Stormers. Had we won that game, we would have slipped into the knockouts with one point. So there was progress all along. So if you bring this era into uh, you know into the reckoning now, we've been in it for three seasons. The first two were there and thereabout. This one was very close. We all know how close it was. Um, 
And yeah, like you say, in 2016, when they got into those knockouts, I mean, we all know what happened. It was three years in a row they've had in the final. So I feel very much like the Lions are in that same space. We're in that 2015 at this stage. We can break through next season. I think we're going to see some dominance from them and possibly challenging for silverware. I hope you're right. I honestly do. I, th I really think they deserve a bit more success right now for all the hard work that's gone in there. I mean, nobody deserves success because they work hard. They deserve success because they're good. But the point is, yeah. they, they, are, they are good. When they play well, they play very damn well. Make no mistake. They must just do it more often. Clinton, thanks, no, man. I enjoyed it. And thanks for the for the chat. The, yeah, we're going to do it again. Um, yeah, definitely. It's not that far off. And you know, if you keep contact and uh, we'll see how it goes. I definitely want to pick up this uh, cudgel when uh, the new season starts. Please, man. No, absolutely. Thank you once again. It's been an absolute pleasure of mine chatting to the times that I have. And I look forward to the ones happening in the future.